Whistler Mountain Bike Park. If you're a mountain biker, this place has to be in contention for the happiest place on earth. But to make it even better, I'm gonna go over a few essential tips and tricks for where to stay, how to get here, what lifts to take, what sort of trails to expect while you're up there. So let's go over everything you need to know for Whistler Bike Park. So if you're like me, you'll be starting your trip by flying into Vancouver International Airport. So let's start there. So once you've picked up your bags from the airport, you need to be able to get to Whistler. And I did a whole bunch of research on different shuttle companies. And basically I found uh, one of two things. Either they were incredibly expensive, <laughs> or, they, or you would have to get your bike and all your bags and drag yourself onto a train and into downtown Vancouver where they would pick you up, which is not very much fun. I've done that trip a couple of times. And I found these guys, uh, Whistler Connection, which is also, they're called Whistler Shuttle and Ride Booker. That's slightly confusing, but if you go to whistlerconnection.com or, or whistlershuttle.com, um, they'll actually meet you with your flight time at the airport so you don't have to bring your stuff anywhere and uh, straight out to Whistler. So I was pretty pumped about that. And they were like really reasonable. So once you get into Whistler, um, you've got tons of hotel choices um, from Airbnbs to nice hotels and things like that. I tend to stay at Ava Hotel for a couple of reasons. One, they're just like super bike centric and so they have a bike valet so you just drop your bike off with them and go and pick it up when you're ready to ride. There's tool station, washing station, complimentary GoPros, pretty much everything. And like most of the pros that ride here stay here so you can give your favorite pro a high five on the way out. It's all good times. Now, if you're just day tripping and you're not staying the night, then I definitely, definitely, definitely recommend parking and starting your day from Creekside. So up that way is the Creekside Gondola, and there's a nice little village there, and there's free parking right here. This is the only place left in Whistler that I know of that actually has free parking. And the best part is, it's always empty. So speaking of Creekside Zone, there are four biking zones total in Whistler, each with their own unique personality and feel. So let's start with the Fitzsimmons Zone at the base of Whistler Village. And if you're a super, super smart person, you'll show up on a weekday and the lineup looks like this. <laughs> so you always put your card in your uh, pocket. Some people put it in their shoe, stuff like that. You just need to be able to brush up against one of those machines that I'm gonna run up to here. Just roll your bike onto the bike tray, have a seat, and enjoy the view to the top. If you've never ridden a bike lift before, don't worry, there are lifties at the top who will be waiting with your bike, ready to go. So the Fitzsimmons zone is the lowest zone on the mountain, which also means it's the first to open up yeah. every year, usually <laughs> mid-May. full of green, blue, black, and double black trails, so it has something for absolutely everybody. From the flowy Crank It Up to iconic trails like A-Line and Dirt Merchant. Ah, the Garbanzo Zone. The Garbo Zone is accessed via chairlift right near the top of the Fitzsimmons chair, so you gotta take the Fitzsimmons chair first, and then you take the Garbo chair. And it takes you much, much higher up the mountain. The runs are longer, tend to be a little harder on both bodies and bikes. The trails are incredible though. There's blue flow trails like Blue Velvet and Unamas, technical gnar trails like Goat's Gully, and super sized jump trails like Freight Train. It's so good. Now the peak zone, which really just means the top of the world trail, is a totally different beast. It requires a separate add-on ticket and they only give a few away per day to maintain the environmental integrity of the Alpine Zone. 
You take the main Whistler Village gondola from the heart of Whistler Village straight up the mountain. Once at the top, you've got to take another chair. The peak chair can only be accessed via connector trail. Kind of, it's like a black diamond trail that you have to take to get over to the peak chair. And up you go. Just remember, you're now at a very high elevation, so there could be huge temperature differences between the village and the top of the peak chair. It can get really cold. When I filmed this, it was actually end of July, to give you an idea. <laughs> it's a long, epic trail that has you pretty far away from any shop or workbench, so bring common spares like tubes, pump, food, water, you just really don't want to be stuck out there without the right supplies. There's plenty of speedy tech to be had as you descend out of the alpine into the trees. Just don't let a rock catch you off guard. Oh! What happened there? Now the Creekside Zone is a brand new riding area with a number of fresh trails to hit. As I mentioned earlier, it has its own village and gondola and has a really low-key vibe that I really like. So new for 2018 are some amazing flow trails like Insomnia and Earth Circus, whose perfect flow seems to go on forever. Like forever, ever. But that's a good thing. This feels like somebody's like secret backyard trail. Contrast that with fresh, loamy tech trails like Delayed Fuse, which is a black diamond tech trail. And you've got a brand new section of mountain that has plenty of lines to hit already and a really chill vibe down in the village once you're done riding. Those roots, they are no joke. So if there's one question I get asked constantly, it's which bike should I be riding from Whistler Bike Park? And it's a great question. You know, you see videos from smooth flow trails to which almost looks like, you know, flat concrete to uh, super gnarly and fast tech trails and everything in between a huge drops. So like what bike works best for that? And there's no really one right answer for this. There's no one perfect bike for Whistler, just like in general. But uh, I will say this, you could take any bike you want on Whistler, as long as it's got working brakes, a little tread on the tires, and it's not going to completely rattle itself apart down the first bit of crank it up, you can ride whatever. It really kind of comes down to how much do you want to put your body through, and how much do you want to spend on replacing parts. <laughs> bike parks and Whistler Bike Park with its extra long runs can be really, really hard on bikes. Pretty much every time I've gone there and ridden for more than two days, I'm replacing something on my bike. Now that's nothing wrong with Whistler itself. It's just the fact that you're just like hammering down a mountain on your poor bicycle over and over and over and over again. That's the beauty of the hill, but it's also really tough on your poor bicycle. So you can bring your own bike and ride that. Expect to maybe have to replace a couple things here and there. If you're on a trail bike, uh, I would recommend at least 140 millimeters of suspension front and rear. Uh, 160 millimeter bikes are great at the park, especially some of the newer enduro ones that are like 170 front and 160 millimeter rear. Awesome bikes for the park. Personally, if you have the funds and you're in Whistler and you're gonna be riding for more than one day, I recommend renting a downhill bike. A proper downhill bike from uh, one of the shops in the Whistler village, because one, it's gonna have tons of travel, uh, suspension travel, and that's gonna really soak up the bumps and it's gonna save your body. It's, you're gonna be like, kissing that bike after two days because your hands won't be, you know, big swelled mitts of red, that's getting really graphic. Anyways, and another nice thing about it is if you get a rental bike and you get the insurance on the rental bike, if something breaks, it doesn't matter. You just bring it back and they'll either give you a new one or fix it right away and you're back on the hill and you don't have to spend any extra money. So depending on how you look at it, 
and how hard you ride your bike, it might actually save you money in the long run to just rent a bike with insurance. So that's my answer. It's a pretty vague answer. You can ride whatever bike you want. Just depends on how sore you want to be the next day and whether you want to spend money on parts or on rental bikes. All right, so this next section I actually filmed last September after I had an injury doing a, a Whistler heli drop, and there's a video that you can watch on that. But I filmed the whole thing with my GoPro. I was even more of a hack then than I am now, but I really wanted to include some tips and tricks for when you're actually off the bike in Whistler. So you've got the riding at Whistler, and that is clearly very, very, very awesome. But uh, when you're not riding, what do you do? There's, uh, it's a huge village, probably the biggest uh, village I have seen for a mountain. Uh, there's tons of restaurants, tons of bike places. So um, I'm sidelined for the day because of my hand and my brain being uh, knocked around pretty good yesterday in a ride. So let's go over a couple of uh, things that can make your stay even better. Cool place that I like to go and check out when in uh, Whistler Village is the Troy Lee Design Store. Um, one, because it's got lots of cool gear, but even more so, it's kind of also like a museum. They've got lots of really uh, sweet memorabilia from the past. This is Brandon Semenuk's uh, Rampage bike from last year. 26 inch uh, bike from last year from Trek, which is pretty cool to see. You don't see that very often. You can come over here and you've got uh, one of his uh, helmets right there, another Brendan Seminuk piece. And over on the other side over there, you can see one from Aaron Gwynn, which is pretty sweet on the racer side of things. And they've got lots of like motocross kind of memorabilia as well, some snowboard stuff. So there's lots to check out. So definitely come on in here and uh, see all the cool wares. Hey, there he is. Hi. So uh, there's a, a little uh, group of businesses, maybe not so little, but a group of businesses about, I don't know, like a 10 minute drive out of the middle of the Whistler Village. And uh, one of those businesses that are part of there that you have to come check it out is the Chromeg headquarters. Like this is like the worldwide headquarters for Chromeg. And right from when you pull up, it's sweet. I mean, they've got a cool dog named Laska, says his collar. Just like right from the get go, you've got some like sweet one-off bikes out front, like some of the staff bikes and all just like as stylish as you can possibly get for sure. It's kind of like a candy store. There's uh, frames on the wall, parts everywhere. I did a quick rock walkthrough before starting the video and uh, yeah, I got a, a tiny tour of the front area, including the speakers. Right up there, that's bike number one. That started the whole thing to Chrome Mag, so that's really sweet. All right, so uh, this is Darcy, and uh, Darcy said, hey, we should go for a tour of the place. Uh, so this is like the world headquarters, you're saying, right? Like yeah, everything is, uh, comes out of here. Yeah, we just moved into this space uh, in the past November. Yeah. So we've just been here just about a year. Cool. And then yeah, this is cool. all frame parts. Yeah. You can see like head tubes. Oh, yeah. Uh, bottom bracket shells, yokes for stays. And yeah. So this is where it all gets assembled when we cool. send frames. We have frames made in Squamish and Vancouver. Oh really? So parts parts get picked for whatever's being built, say it's primers or Samurai 65s or yeah. what have you, and the suitable parts get picked and sent the way it goes. And they get built. Nice. Into beautiful art. Yeah. <laughs> we do our own catalogs and, and all that stuff. And cool. It's Cohen. Hey Cohen. One of our old trail dogs. Oh yeah. Yeah, are you guys so like a music got, place or a bike place? Yeah, we got a <laughs> it's kind of half and this half. This is where the true magic happens. Oh, nice. That's Claire. She's super fast on a bike. <laughs> she can destroy me and all of you on a bicycle, just so you know. <laughs> so Claire, when you're not racing and riding your bike, what do you do here at Chromeg? Graphic design here. Oh, okay, graphic design. Nice. Like for the apparel and stuff? Apparel and graphics for hard goods. Awesome. And yeah. Lots of nice. Uh, over at uh, Vorsprung Suspension, which is somewhere that I've wanted to go for a very, very long time. Um, these guys are kind of wizards with suspension. The man, the legend. He's the connoisseur of compression. He's the reverend of rebound. We have, walking away, Steve. Good to meet you. Thanks for uh, showing me around the place a little bit. Okay. And you guys deal with like every type of suspension, basically, like this. We deal with most of the major brands. So Steve showed me around the shop and even gave me a sneak peek at some yet-to-be-released product. Shh. Vorsprung also does an in-person tuning program, which I had no idea about. And so when we work with the general public, uh, we do like bike parks set up clinics during the summer. Mm. Um, then we just do it based on their feedback. Oh, cool. What we will do is listen to their feedback about the way the bike is behaving and we'll make changes. Uh, 
up that should be consistent with what they're feeling. Okay. Um, but we won't tell them what the changes are until afterwards. Ah, interesting. And the reason for that is that uh, that way we take out confirmation bias. Yeah, so people, placebo you know, effect. Totally. People <laughs> think that something's going to make something better, yeah. then often they'll go looking for that improvement and then yeah. they'll find it even though it may not really exist. Yes, um, which is probably 90% of bicycle purchases. <laughs> yeah, totally. Yeah. And so that, that's really difficult to remove unless you have someone else adjusting for you. Yeah. And so by doing that uh, and by listening to you know, the, comments, the comments that people have about the way the bike feels and asking a few pointed questions to go along with that, mm. then uh, we can generally get a very good feel for okay. what people need. So you said you do a clinic. Is that like a per person thing or do you do a group or something? It's a or? group. So yeah. we have, we usually run it with groups of between five and eight people. Okay, so, so like a whole race team could come in and... Absolutely. Ah, yeah. that's cool, that's and awesome. And then uh, you can like get at that information on your website if, you, mm -hmm. if somebody wanted to book that for next year. That's really yeah, awesome, sure. I didn't know you did that. Yeah. Well, that's great, man. Thanks again. Not a problem. I really appreciate it. Bye -bye. And there's also another company right over by Vorsprung and Cro-Mag. Little place called Whistler Brewing. Yeehaw. Kind of like the name suggests, Whistler Brewing Company uh, brews right here in Whistler. smells delicious in here. Nice and hoppy. Oh, nice. Wow. That is beautiful. Uh, hey, Clint. What are you brewing today? Dunkel. Dunkel. Nice. Winter Dunkel, which is actually our uh, Christmas beer. Oh, yeah. So it's a bit of an orangey, chocolatey, uh, coriander yeah. flavor. It's oh. quite nice. The master at work. A lot of people complain about it. Oh, yeah, that's so cute. So that's it for this Essential Whistler Bike Park Tips video. This is all I could fit into this video. I wish I could do more, but maybe I'll do a part two to this. If you have any essential tips and tricks for Whistler Bike Park, leave them in the comment section below. I'd love to hear about them. And if you want to see a ton more Whistler content from me, I have an entire Whistler playlist down in the description. And I have links to all the businesses that I went to down in the description so you can go give them some support. So yeah, thanks again for watching. Make sure you subscribe and hit the little bell. And I'll see you on the next video. Cheers.